welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where for a full half hour it's fine to fib. On Lee Mack's team tonight, a breakfast TV presenter who appeared on Strictly and suffered a serious ankle injury. Although, in my view, not serious enough. <laughs> it's Bill Turnbull! <laughs> And I'm not saying he's camp, but if Glee did a Mamma Mia special starring poodles wearing spandex, <laughs> I imagine he'd watch it in leg warmers. <laughs> From Pineapple Dance Studios, Louis Spence! And joining David Mitchell tonight, an Irish comedian who came to England to find his fortune, or failing that, any loose change, it's David O'Doherty. <laughs> In Doc Martin, she played a doctor's receptionist who was rude and stupid. Or, to put it another way, she played a doctor's receptionist. <laughs> Star of the old guys and the IT crowd is Catherine Parkinson. <laughs> right, we will begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to separate the truth from the lies. Catherine, you are first tonight. Would you reveal all? I was so sure that Wombles were real, I used one as an example of a mammal in a GCSE biology exam. <laughs> <laughs> How could it be true? How could it be true, Lee? But which one did you draw? What did he look like? I didn't draw anything that wasn't in the question. Yeah, like, you took it in the It was given an example of a mammal. Oh, you used it, just wrote it down. I gave, I gave, th it was given three examples of mammals, and I said bear, because that's an obvious one. Yeah. Whale, a bit less obvious, yeah. clever. And Womble was my third example. How old, how old yeah. were you at the time? Uh, uh 15. What are you looking at David for? <laughs> <laughs> ourselves what the Wombles looked like. Uh, we've got Uncle Bulgaria. Yeah. <laughs> he was like the Don Corleone of the, uh, <laughs> the Womble family. What grade did you get then? A. You got A's even though you think Wombles are mammals. I should, I should make it clear that I didn't think the children's programme was a documentary. <laughs> I thought the children's programme, that Womble, was based on a real mammal. So for, ex for example, a bear is a real mammal, but, but, but Yogi is Bear real. isn't a Thank fair you. representation. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me for a GCSE at age 15, the question was give three examples of a mammal. Look, Lee, this isn't the end of a game show. It's not like and this one's for the GCSE. <laughs> Questions. Well, surely the question in a GCSE at 50 wouldn't be give us an example of three mammals. It's a bit of a basic question. What? Why do you think that is so easy? Well, it's quite, it's quite you are such an intellectual snob. Because... <laughs> <laughs> right, that's my role on the show. I'm sorry, you could have said cat, dog. That's what. Any number. Are you, are you stuck for the third one? <laughs> <laughs> You could say that you knew that they were fictional, but, but based on a real yes. animal called the Womble. I thought that maybe it was based on the fact that in yeah. real life they made their burrows from, like, condoms oh, you know, and... Yeah. and, and... <laughs> in reality, of course, most creatures perish because of litter, things that the everyday folk leave behind. <laughs> so, in a way, the Wombles did a lot of bad. Are you saying that the Wombles they, message they encouraged exist. people to litter? Yes. <laughs> people sort of said, well, maybe I was going to throw this away properly, but maybe the Wombles can make an extension out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, people do dress dogs up like that these days, and so you, you can be sure. Well, they're, they're possibly just trained uh, Wombles. Yeah. <laughs> but these, in the, in the story, the Wombles were... That wasn't just poor old bewildered Womble, but someone's put some glasses on him. Mm. He's put his own glasses. He's gone to the Womble optician <laughs> and said, could you fashion me some reading glasses out of some stuff that the everyday folk have left around? And, and they've done that. Right. That, that's actually not true. He found the glasses. He found, it, they found, he found the clothes. He found glasses of exactly the right prescription. No, no, possibly. <laughs> possibly. There was no evidence that it was the right prescription. There was an episode, wasn't there, where an old man had died on Wimbledon Common. And <laughs> immediately the Wombles are on him. And there he is, naked. <laughs> it's all right. No dignity. No dignity if the Wombles are around. It's a brilliant programme. <laughs> well, what do 
we think, Bill? I think it would be an insult to Catherine's intelligence to believe that she wrote that down in an exam. I don't believe it. You don't? You see, I think... Go on, what do you think, though? No, I don't believe it. Why? No. Because I don't, because I think that she seems better educated than that. I mean, I got kicked out of school at 15 and... Why? Because I wasn't very educated and I didn't really know anything. I couldn't spell or read. I was doing high kicks and backflips all the time. They got bored of me. <laughs> what did you do well. when you were expelled? Did you just run out into the street yeah. singing and dancing yeah. and going, yeah. I don't need this? Yeah. yeah. I don't need this. I don't want this. I can't spell. I can't do what? Head roll, head roll, head roll. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. This program, we have never had two <laughs> such opposing. <laughs> Bill and Luke. Well, there we are. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's time, Lee, to time. Uh, make a decision. Which way are you going to go, Lee? Okay, I'll go with my team and say that it's not You're true. Even though my lie. gut is screaming it's true, I will go with my team and say it's a lie. Okay, Catherine, is it a lie or is it true? It is, in fact, true. Oh. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Catherine did use a womble as an example of a mammal in her GCSE biology exams. <laughs> right, uh, David O'Doherty, you're next. I am currently seeing a hypnotist to cure me of my compulsion to visit hypnotists. <laughs> Take too long. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been had a compulsion to see hypnotists? Well, it started off. I had a fear of heights, and I visited a, a, a lot of different practitioners. It is a serious enough thing. I mean, it is. It's unusual to be this high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I tried hypnosis, and then I seemed to be getting something temporary from it. So then I ended up visiting a lot more hi what, hypnotists. What were you getting temporary from it? I was getting some relief from it for a while. From your, from your fear of heights? Yeah. So you're now relieved of that at this point. Why would you go back? Oh, because then uh, the relief is temporary. So I, I ended up going back and then I ended up getting uh, really uh, addicted to visiting dipna, different hit. What do they do? <laughs> Normally they just put me under for a minute. Put and under then what? Put yeah. water. <laughs> they, they make me... It's serious. They make me lie, <laughs> lie on the ground. So they make you lie on the ground? <laughs> going to cure your fear of fires. That should, surely they should make you lie on top of the cupboard. <laughs> well, I am knocked out during this, and then when I, uh, when I wake up, they put me on top of something. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So how many different hypnotists have you seen? I don't know. It's into the hundreds at this point. <laughs> how many different hypnotists? It was costing... Most of my income was going on it. I mean, I would do... Whatever money I could get was just going straight into hypnosis then. <laughs> Have you been seeing the, the one you've been seeing now for to get to get you off being seen a hypnotist? Well, this one about two years now. I mean, um, it, it, so the yeah. man you've been seeing for the last two years has been specifically to for, for the problem that you want to stop seeing hypnotists. <laughs> not not for the height thing anyway. Just I'm addicted to hypnotists. I need to stop. That's what you're seeing him for. Yeah. And you've been seeing him for two years. <laughs> we are nearly at, we're nearly out of the woods. <laughs> Do they ever touch you in any way? Generally, the sort of uh, severe vertigo hypnosis I get doesn't involve physical contact, but it does involve being winched up. Winched up? <laughs> well, winched up to get, to get the height, so then when you vertigo. come around, you're, you're at a height and you so, think so this you, is normal. When, you, when, you, when he puts you under... Well, this is going back when I had the serious problem. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, let's go back to that problem. That, that interests me, the winching up. So yeah. he, they, they, they put you out and, and then you're gone. Do you remember being... Do you wake up and go... No, you're gone. You put on a sort of Velcro suit at the stars. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Same. No, it's like you're, I'm gone, and then it's come down from up there on top of the uh, <laughs> top of the cupboard. So they winch you up, and then winch you down onto the cupboard. Now I can get down because I've been <laughs> hypnotised. So, but you've been winched up to go on top of the cupboard <laughs> while I'm under. Yeah. So he winches you up, then slightly nudges, <laughs> slightly nudges you over the cupboard and winches you down again. <laughs> why? Why does he have to put you on the cupboard? Why does he just winch you up and keep you winched? What's the advantage of being on a cupboard over being winched up? Have you got a fear of being up high on cupboards? <laughs> What's the name of the hypnotist you see? Dr. Spanks. <laughs> <laughs> Never before. Never before. You're man. doing really well. <laughs> You know when you start 
sentence and you don't know how it's going to end. It's never happened before with just two words, doctor and spank. <laughs> It's a tricky one. Well, it's a tough one. I'm really going with you on this one. What do you say? <laughs> Even if I believed everything else, I've never met anybody German called Spanks. <laughs> it's S P E on blows. G H N K S. You just ruined it. Oh, <laughs> is that what ruined it? Because there is never an umlaut on an E. There's never a man being velcroed and winched <laughs> Please. I say it's a lie then. He's saying it's a lie. David O'Doherty, was that fantastic tale the truth or was it a lie? Incredible as it seems, that is a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Good yes, uh, unsurprisingly, it's a lie. David isn't seeing a hypnotist to cure him of a compulsion to visit hypnotists. So I went to see a hypnotist once. All the time he was saying, look into my eyes, look in... Sorry, sorry, not hypnotist, optician. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, the scores are tied. <laughs> and next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest. It's Mark. <laughs> Right, uh, we'll start with you, David O'Doherty. What is Mark to you? Well, this is Mark, and together we started a lost animals detective agency. <laughs> so there we have it. David's animal detective. Uh, what about you, Catherine? What's your connection to Mark? Uh, this is Mark. He is my recycling man, and last year he put a note through my door saying he thought we were eating too many takeaways. <laughs> All right, Catherine's... Uh, healthy eating recycling man. Uh, David Mitchell, your relationship with Mark? Uh, this is Mark. He saved me from choking in Argos after <laughs> I... <laughs> David, David, you haven't even heard of Argos. <laughs> <laughs> he saved me from choking in Argos <laughs> after I swallowed one of their little pens. <laughs> Precisely what is implausible about that? <laughs> so there we have it. David O'Doherty's private eye for pets, Catherine's judgmental bin man, or David's high street hero, Lee's team, where to begin? Well, um, well, let's start with Catherine. How many takeaways were you eating? Chinese, Thai and pizzas. Yeah, that's the first night. What about In... the second night? <laughs> <laughs> Indians. I wasn't having takeaways every night. This is why I personally think it was a very rude thing to do. I mean, apart from the fact that it's none of this man's business, who I don't know, he's basically my staff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, how, I don't know. How, how often does your him. staff turn up to take away the refuge? God, I don't... My husband deals with all, all the rubbish and stuff. Yeah, I don't quite know what that means. I mean, he doesn't deal with booking them, does he? They just come every week. He or every puts two. the rubbish out, <laughs> Lee. You still might know how often they come. I accept that, but you said your husband deals with it, whatever that means. It means he's the one. I, and in, in my family, your wife Mrs Bryden is happy for me to put the rubbish out. I do it really? every Thursday night. you take night? a little stepladder out with you? And... Yes. <laughs> reach the top of the wheelie bin, so, uh, Oh, sometimes it says, just take a run at it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Cascading down on your head! <laughs> and then, when you think it's all over the place, the little mammals turn up to clear all the rubbish. <laughs> Give us a rough average over two weeks. At th that time, how many takeaways were you eating? Every other night, I think. So that's what? That's, that's normal to me, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> he writes a note and it says... It said, I remember it beginning with, um, I hope you don't think this is rude, and, you, you know, did. it is rude, yeah. and it was rude. I hope um, this is but rude, but... I, I'm, I, I wonder if you've considered that you may be eating too many takeaways. 
yours, Mark. So stand seven. up. S what? Stand up. I am standing up. No. <laughs> All them takeaways, let's have a look That's at you. That's my mic pack. I'm going to go and have a quick feel. Oh my God. I'm allowed to, I'm gay. <laughs> if it turns out this whole facade has been a lie, Louis. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gay. <laughs> Can I just say, Catherine, I'm gay? tell you, she doesn't feel like she's eaten a lot of takeaways. Thank she's God, firm that's, and tiny. Well, thank God that was the answer, because it would have been awful if it had gone back off. She's telling the truth. <laughs> 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 she's tight and stinks of curry. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's tight and tired. <laughs> Lee, Lee, what about, what about your other suspects? Uh, David O'Doherty. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you were running a detective agency for lost animals, <laughs> is that correct? Well, we started off just as a detective agency, generally. <laughs> And then his lost animal started bringing you up, saying, can you find my owner for me? No. What? The... It's the mid-80s in Dublin. There's a lot of crime. And we were eight or nine. And we decided we were going to do something about the crime. So you start off as detective agency, and it, and it doesn't go so well. So you think you need to be a bit more niche. We weren't... We, we, do, we just weren't getting the caseload. <laughs> We're getting nothing. <laughs> Did you recover any lost animals? Well, the, um, in the window of the local shop, there seemed to be some people uh, had lost uh, cats and dogs. So, and some of them were offering cash rewards. It was decided that we would ring up one of these people. And uh, as I had the most mature voice of the agency, uh, <laughs> the, I, I had to speak to the lady. And what would you say? Uh, hello, is that Mrs. Whitaker? And she would go, yes. And I'd say, and did you l lose a cat called Whiskers recently? And she'd go, oh, yes, oh, yes. And I'd go, well, you're in luck, because my eight-year-old friend and I have set up a pet-finding detective agency. <laughs> and we're going to take on your case. <laughs> and did you have any results? Any good results? Did you ever find an animal, ever? No. <laughs> what, what about uh, the, the other David, as he's now known? Oh, Mr. we're actually Mitchell. considering that, are we? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what were you buying in Argos? A uh, kettle. <laughs> you walk me through the process of how it worked yeah. when you went to Argos. <laughs> <laughs> I walked through the door and I looked through the catalogue mm -hmm. to find good the stuff. kettle. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What type of kettle uh, did you go for? A, a, for boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've seen the kettle, you've, and then what? What happens next? Uh, I, well, I, I filled in the... I checked on the little keypad that they had it in, in stock. <laughs> you, I'll tell you what, you are down with yeah. the kids. <laughs> this, uh, the pen yes. that you swallowed, how long was it? Sort of about that long, I think. And you choked. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um... <laughs> marvellous. And... Absolutely marvellous. Why... Never has such a clean sentence <laughs> meant so much. <laughs> Why did you put it in your mouth? <laughs> I was mean, sort of chewing the end of it, sort of thinking. Try the little working class. And then I, was, class, I, I sneezed. <laughs> you sneezed? <laughs> The way you do when you sneeze and suck in at the same time, yeah? And what was it? Was, you had a back, a back draft effect, did you? And it went, hope straight in. So you sneeze. In order, in or, in order, to, I involuntarily inhaled before the, the exhalation. Are you like that Hoover Man? <laughs> did, that, did everything implode into your gob? Yeah. So Mark's ran up to you. Yeah. Has he give you the Heimlich manoeuvre? No. <laughs> he just sort of patted me hard on the back a few times. Right. Oh, um, we need an answer. I can't see Mr. Mitchell in Argos. I think it could be true his story because he looks quite Irish, quite fair, isn't he? And... He looks Irish. Yeah, right. I think he looks Irish. So what are you going to say then, Lee? Should we say David O'Doherty? Yeah. I've told yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you don't O'Doherty. blame me. That's all I'm saying. We're going to go David O'Doherty. Saying David O'Doherty. Okay. Uh, Mark. Would you now please reveal your true identity? 
David O'Doherty and I ran a pet detective. Oh, David. Yes, it's uh, absolutely true. The, you had a, a detective agency. I was uh, at home rooting around, and I, we made business cards. And uh, <laughs> yeah, caps at the bottom is we handle everything. <laughs> You're the first detective. Yeah. And Mark is... He's, a, he's out of notes. Down as notes. <laughs> <laughs> notes. You reduced him to an inanimate <laughs> noun. What a man. Thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. We will start with... <laughs> it's Louis. Oh. I've got my glasses on. <laughs> this means I've got to read. Right, hold on. <laughs> I make myself cry before every big dance performance to get rid of any excess water weight. What do you think, David? My, my first question is, what do you think of to produce this torrent of tears that would uh, get rid of all this excess water? Well, I mean, as a dancer, you're so criticised for the way you look. And some of the things you have to wear on stage are very revealing and can be very tight. And so I just think about how awful I would look and what kind of criticism I, I would get. Right. So that's enough to reduce me to tears. Right. right. <laughs> the spiteful remarks that people would make yes. if you don't burst yes. into tears yes. and lose a few yes. pounds of water. Yes. Pounds? Would you be losing pounds just for oh, the quick listen, drive? Yes, you can. You absolutely can. <laughs> Louis, where did you where did you discover this technique? Well, it's actually... Uh, a lot of ballet dancers, a lot of commercial dancers do do it. I mean, it's a, it's a funny world we live in. What we do is extreme, what we do with our body is extreme. You know, it's just, the, it's just one more thing to be extreme with. How do you make sure it doesn't go onto your skin and then still be weighing you, you do down? do it like this, with a flat back over. <laughs> <laughs> so they just drop like that. That must be really difficult to stand... I mean, have you ever any experience of standing in that position? Can you cry now? <laughs> this is the only time I do it. I'm surprised you can be in that position and can do anything that would bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> oh, that was right. yeah. Louis, would you like some music? Oh, don't get me started, because you know I'm not an exhibitionist. And that means... <laughs> Right, David. It's time to guess. I think we, as a team, don't think that that's true. All right, well, yeah. we're all on edge as we wait to find out. <laughs> um, Louis, truth or lie? <laughs> lie. Oh, what a shocker. Yes, it's a lie. Louis doesn't make himself cry before every big dance performance to get rid of any excess water weight. Uh, Lee. I can tell the circumference of someone's head just by looking at them. <laughs> David, what do you think? No, you can't. <laughs> Let's move on. I, I actually had my head measured yesterday for what a week. What a waste week. of time. You should have just come here today. Yeah. <laughs> so I know exactly what my head circumference is hey, right hey, now. Hey, Catherine. Bring it on. <laughs> Go on, then. What's her head Isn't circumference? Uh, let the lady ask if she wants to know. <laughs> yes, can I, can I help you? Yeah. Me? Yeah. What is the circumference of my head? <laughs> Could you just have a little bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, from my expert opinion, you are... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would say you are... A large. <laughs> really? David, large isn't a circumference. <laughs> Tell me, what did he say? Because <laughs> you've got it wrong. I guarantee. Listen to this. What did he say? He said that He's... I was twenty-four inches. Well, there you go. Classic lame. You're clearly a slow <laughs> 
you reckon about my head, you know, in terms of circumference? You're a 26. 26. Right, 26 inches. 28, 26, 23 and a half. <laughs> you're not, you're not just out? reversing perspective and thinking that the heads that are further away must be larger. <laughs> David's head is actually bigger than Catherine's, even with the perspective of the distance. Hey. Catherine's got quite a small head. She's got quite a small head, which you defined early on as large. <laughs> it's right. time to okay. uh, <clears throat> encourage Lee to, to stop talking. <laughs> I don't think it's true. Do you not? No. <laughs> there is something about it that just just has the ring of Fishy. total croc to it. <laughs> Have you got a tape measure? What, why? Well, then we can prove I'm right by measuring your head. Yeah, if we did have a tape measure, yeah. you wouldn't want to prove you're right, because you don't get a point just if this is true. You have to make it... No, no, if you had a tape measure, uh, you would prove that I'm right, and then you'd say true. Yeah, and, and it would be true, and we'd get a point. <laughs> and... <laughs> I just... <laughs> Sorry, I know what I'm doing. I used to be a vet. <laughs> My head okay. shape is like a torpedo, remember, though. Remember you have to, to get the remember full Remember not to measure it from the nose, Lee. Yeah. That Are was, you a, measuring that was a tape you did earlier. Well, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I mean, you can take it. I, the nature of a head is you've that it gets smaller. You've got to get the height so of the head. To... David, would you read to... out the result, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, David, what, what does that lead you I to? I still conclude? don't believe him. <laughs> really? Can I still don't believe Do you believe him now? <gasps> no, no, I do you don't. Believe him now? Oh, oh, my God. A goodness. little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, I think we're going to say this is a lie. You're going to say it's a lie? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lee Mack. Yes? Were you telling the truth or were you lying? I was, in fact, telling a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell the circumference of someone's head just by looking at them. And uh, that noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show. And I can reveal that David's team romped a victory by six points to three. <laughs> but of course, uh, it's not just a team game. And my individual liar of the week this week is David O'Doherty. <laughs> David O'Doherty, uh, obviously, I, I don't really think he's the best liar, but I'm just giving him the award to fulfil a regional quota. <laughs> Good night.